Hello and welcome to another episode of Disaster Empire Quick Views. This is the podcast where we talk to thought leaders and innovators in resilience. And I am sitting with Bob Arnold today, and I'm so excited to be able to bring him to all of you because he is on the forefront of really supporting the resilience that many of us are now looking to implement or are implementing in our organizations. So, Bob, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. It is so great to have you here. Wonderful. Well, again, like I said earlier, thanks for having me. I'm usually behind the scenes, so it's a. I appreciate the opportunity to be in the front of the camera a little bit, even though I'm a little, typically a little gun shy behind that. So, I appreciate it, though. Well, it's so good to have you here and to have you share what you're seeing in the industry. And we're going to be talking about resilience and the Disaster Recovery Journal. As you know, I am a big supporter of the work that you and your team do. And you have one of the longest running conferences in the industry and maybe the longest running. So I'll let you speak to that in a moment. So let's dive right in. So with that, really, what is the secret sauce that has kept the DRJ running all of these years? Sure. And I feel very, very blessed that we've been the longest running and most dominant event in our space for 35 plus years or so. We've always created an environment, I feel, to, of networking of all levels, industry backgrounds, for everyone to kind of learn from each other. We kind of have that theme of everyone's welcome and encourage and that diversity, I think, is what's really key to bringing the biggest audiences together to show. We have this stigma of being the new to business continuity show, but I'm proud of that. Uh, we don't exclude folks just due to the fact that they may not have 10 years or eight years or, or eight certifications. Well, we want them to join us, learn from those that do have those uh, those years of experience. But in the same time, uh, we still have plenty of industry veterans uh, and subject matter experts. I think it's that diversity of experience, background, culture differences that really sets our shows apart. Add to that the environment of, you know, always covering the most cutting edge topics, speakers, boards, sponsors uh, in, a, in our format, you know, we have a winning combination. Uh, and I feel like we do pull off a, a first class event show after show. Absolutely. And I can certainly attest to that having attended, I think the last three or four in a row, which has really been a great honor to do that. And I wanted to really dive a little bit deeper into what you were just sharing can you talk to the audience a bit more about some of those key aspects that really keeps the DRJ at the forefront and gets audiences coming back? I know the networking is great for me and all of the various topics um, that you can choose to sit in on. You know, I, I know I've, I've thought about that long and hard. It's hard to put it in a, you know, it's simply into a list, uh, but there's there's definitely some some aspects, I think, that makes DRJ stand out from the other events. First, we're just very, very well organized and prepared. I told you earlier, Rose, Rose is already starting our palette and packing for, for our next show in March already. <laughs> That's how far out we plan. Mall and, you know, mighty staff run a pretty well-oiled event. Uh, we ensure the attendee experience is everything it can be. Attendees and companies, we understand, they, they invest a lot of time and money to attend our events, and we want to continuously improve that experience to ensure we make it worthwhile every show. Uh, some of the longer lists would be probably the longevity and legacy see our diverse attendee profile, very comprehensive agenda. Uh, we have very interactive workshop sessions on both Sunday and Tuesday. We have the largest exhibit hall in our space. This provides attendees opportunities to explore technologies and, and services available in our space. And certainly last but not least are the networking opportunities you mentioned. DRJ events offer ample opportunities for networking with fellow professionals, experts, vendors, that's invaluable. And that's something huge in our in our space is that network. Absolutely. And I know that I really enjoy the opportunity to catch up or to meet new people, hear new ideas. And, and that really is, to me, what makes the DRJ special because it really is focused on the industry with business continuity, disaster recovery, or resilience, as we're now all talking about these days. So as part of that, can you share your thoughts and what does resilience mean to you? Outside the definition, and we defined it in our glossary, but uh, I thought about that as well. And resilience to me is the ability to adapt, uh, preserve, and eventually become stronger through any challenge uh, that we may face or adversity. Uh, so many times we get stuck in a rut or a routine and we, be we become complacent. The ability to adapt is crucial to being resilient. Several examples of adversity DRJ has experienced over the years, uh, but the most recent one, of course, is the pandemic. The pandemic 
pandemic was challenging for most everyone. In-person events were not immune to that. We were incredibly hard hit. While most shows in our space simply threw in the towel, the DRJ Act team really jumped into action. Uh, we were ab- able to practice what we preached, ran three very successful virtual events, and that speaks to our own resiliency through what it seems like an obstacle that could have put us out of business. So resilience to me is having that ability to adapt and preserve and become stronger. Thank you for that. Bob and giving us that kind of inside view and peeling back the curtain a little bit because it may not be something that the average, you know, conference goer was really thinking about. Of course, we were all, you know, impacted by COVID and the pandemic. It's certainly interesting to see how your organization pivoted and really provided that online capability uh, to help all of us continue to learn and grow. So I really appreciate that. that. And that was something, you know, a little more on that that was because, again, we were all in a bubble. Everyone's working from home. We've never been in this isolated environment for so long. And we had our readers and our attendees, everyone, everyone was looking, what, what's everyone else doing? What's everyone, outside of emails, no one could really network and find out what other companies were doing to survive and get around the challenges the pandemic presented to us. So I think those virtual events really did a, did a great job filling that void. Absolutely. And I see that you've continued an aspect of that offering through the conference as well. And, and that's really helpful. And I think that for many organizations coming out of the pandemic and and with the cascading effects of that, you know, definitely companies are seeing challenges, right, in, in being profitable and, and competitive in the marketplace. So I think we're going to continue, unfortunately, to see some bumps, right, as we get back to right. our new normal uh, in terms of people being able to attend in person. So really want to commend you and the whole DRJ team for making that happen and continuing to offer people another way to continue to be educated and interact with the industry as a whole. So thank you so much for that. Sure. Things that I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about as well is how do you all at the DRJ really decide what's going, you know, into the next conference? So how are you keeping innovative and how are you keeping on trend in terms of what's happening in the industry? I'd say simply, again, adapting to the challenges uh, is is the key to staying relevant. Uh, We've faced so much adversity over the past 35 years here or there, but it's our willingness to adapt and has been key, Uh, not only covering the correct topics, but how do we cover them effectively in the magazine, our webinars, and eventually our events. There's so many buzzwords and pop-ups that everyone wants to chase and talk about, but we we simply can't lose focus on the overall process of resiliency. No matter the trends, we, we must keep a core set of sessions and articles, discussions around that process. And going back to the the topic of buzzwords of our time, the, the current trend is all about resiliency. You know, the general... I guess this generally refers to the concept of building and strengthening your organization to withstand, adapt, and recover from any incident. More of a proactive approach to dealing with disruptions, disasters, or really any difficult situation your your organization may face, comparably to a more traditional approach or reactive approach uh, or incident approach to dealing with these scenarios or risks facing your organization. So the latest trend is to build that culture, if you want to call it that, to incorporate that into every single business decision process across the board. And again, we could chase topics like AI, blockchain, adaptive, cyber, cloud, just throw out any buzzword you think for the past 30 years. But at the end, they they all should add to that overall concept of resiliency. Absolutely. And I think your team, in my opinion, has done a good job of really keeping to the bedrock of DRJ. So that's disaster recovery and the IT aspect while adding in and evolving, you know, BCM, business continuity management, and now into OF resilience, organizational business resilience, operational resilience. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So I imagine that your team has a very unique perspective in order to see those trends in the industry and to get a sense of where things are going. And how do you and, and the team do that? Uh, we're simply tracking. I mean, that's that's knowing knowing what people want and mainly what how we track is via our website. So we publish a lot of articles. We publish on average about eight to 10 new articles. We have a lot of analytical data 
and knowing, okay, this, this article is trending. This is a topic people are interested, but simply looking at the, the risks. Cyber certainly leads the risk facing every single organization right now. And we want to cover it effectively, but we can't dive deep into the, into the trenches on cyber recovery. We could talk more on cyber resiliency, things like that. Certainly if right now, AI is, is hot. Anything AI you put in an article, people are going to click on, even if it's just talking about simply chat GPT. I know Shane Matthews, industry friend to everyone, and he did a very good yeah. job covering AI at our last show. Uh, but all of a sudden, we have so I think we have 15, 16 submissions already with AI in the subject just for this next show. So it's it's yeah. chasing those trends, covering them adequately, but not overcompensating or over covering them, I think is key. Because again, we still need a BI, how to conduct a BI, how, how to use your BI, assigning RTOs and RPOs to your BI. Those, those are your key concepts, again, you have to keep those core items on the agenda. That's, and again, going back to it, we use analytics uh, to really keep trends of, of the topics folks are most interested in about. Well, it's great to hear that, you know, an event planner and team are behaving much like practitioners because we're doing the same thing on this end is really looking at the risk and analytics, right? It's a little bit of a different lens, yeah. but certainly aligned. And, and many of us, it seems like, are using the same tools. I also really like that you stress that you're really holding to the bedrock foundational elements of the work while keeping an eye on what is evolving in the space as well. And I think that makes a lot of sense so that you're really providing a wide variety of potential attendees, uh, hopefully all attendees, you know, things that they would be interested in. So either refreshing or building skills and then hearing about and trying to think about what's coming next. So I really like that approach. The other thing that I've really noticed is that we're seeing more and more, which is a great thing to me, people of various backgrounds attending the conferences. And I think that's really a great change and evolution overall. Can you share just some anecdotes or stories uh, that you've heard from individuals about the benefits of attending the conference? The, the DNI issue and the, the diversity is very, very passionate, uh, or I'm very passionate about it. Uh, I, I believe in continuous learning and opportunities for all in a diverse setting. Uh, and diversity is one of the biggest goals here at DRJ, diversity in all aspects, not the traditional ones that come to mind when you hear that word. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of feelings that, that erupt when you talk about diversity or DE&I, but we want to ensure all are welcome and learn from each other at the events. We understand that a more diverse DRJ community is truly a stronger DRJ community and different perspectives bring different insights. Uh, we can do a better job of serving our stakeholders, BC community. If our conferences and thought leaderships are, are an accurate reflection of today's diverse world, just about it's just not about marketing DEI like most events do or most organizations do. We're truly trying to make a difference in that. But I think bringing together that diverse audience has been very effective for DRJ. And, and I think we showcase on how well we, we do accept all audiences and we encourage all audiences uh, from all backgrounds, all industries, all uh, experience levels, everything across the board. So that's that's huge in DR, in DRJ's world. I can certainly attest as an editorial board member uh, for a disclosure that, but I'm really seeing that in terms of the board and what we're talking about and how we're trying to really support not just the audience, but also speakers. And so I'm going to give a shout out to Ray Holloman and just share, you know, a story from my perspective that I sat in on one of uh, his presentations at the last DRJ. And I've brought those examples that he shared during that presentation back to my work on a daily basis and giving those as examples when I've been asked, well, why are you thinking about DNI in terms of emergency preparedness? I actually had that question posed to me recently and I was able to answer, you know, uh, using some of Ray's examples and then some of my own from past experience. And, and that's some of the value, you know, of attending a conference is really hearing things said in a different way or getting new ideas and being able to bring those back into our work. So I really want to commend you and the team for giving us those opportunities. 
agree. And I, and I think, I think there's so much more on the DEI front too, to take that educational front. Why are we talking about this as a business continuity topic? So that's, I think our biggest opportunity moving forward in that diverse world. Well, Hey Bob, is there anything else that you wanted to share with the audience that we haven't gotten a chance to talk about? Uh, this is our 70th show. So we're, we're very excited and I'm pleased to announce this is our, you know, 70th show. So we run two a year. So it's our 35th anniversary and 70th show that we'll be celebrating in Orlando this this spring. So that's uh that's something we're very excited about. We're also gonna have some fun seventies type themes come out of, come out of it around the event that we're gonna be celebrating. Congratulations on that. And I think one of the other things that the audience may be interested to know and we've talked about in the past is that it takes a lot of planning to put on these events and you and your team have to put contracts into place. I think it's three years in advance. Correct me if I'm wrong. So those are all considerations that you have in terms of where you're offering a conference. And could you share a little bit, Bob, around where the conference in the fall is going to be? Because that is a change of venue for many of us who've been attending. It is. And like you stated, uh, our, our show t- requires a lot of space. There's not a lot of venues that, that can host us uh, because we do a, we do require a lot of uh, meeting space on not only the general session stage, but the exhibit hall, things like that. So we need a, a very large facility. They're very limited across the country, especially in our line of business. Opportunities out there are very limited uh, and we do, we're required to sign contracts three to four, could be up to five years out. So depending on where we're looking at, especially an, an opportunity or a area like Orlando or Phoenix or San Diego or Denver or something like that. Uh, there's only a couple couple facilities that could actually host us. But yes, our fall show has moved more than our spring show has. Um, we are moving to Dallas. We will we'll be at the Gaylord uh, Texan in September of 24, and we're there for three years, hopefully longer if we if uh, the, the venue and everything works out well for us and our audience. So Thank you for sharing that background. I think it's just helpful for the audience to know. And as they're doing their own planning ahead for attending, um, good to have that insight. Bob, we do have to wrap. It's been so great to talk to you. Is there a fun fact that you want to share? I think we were talking offline that you have a race coming up. I don't know if you wanted to share that with the audience, but just a way for people to get to know you a little bit better. If, if I'm not at DRJ, and I've, I've been working at DRJ since the beginning, pretty well since 1987. My only other job was at 16 working at a nursing home. So any time I spend personally away from DRJ, it's either on a bicycle. I have been racing mountain bikes and road racing and things like that for a about 25 years or so. So I'm either on a bike or on the water with my wife and kid. That's about my only real fun fact. It's not very exciting, but uh, it keeps me fairly active and fairly fit. No, it's great. Self-care is important and doing something that you like to do along with that. And and having downtime and spending time with family is highly important as well. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. Really appreciate taking the time and jumping on and sharing and forecasting what DRJ Spring in 2024 is going to look like a little bit more and into the future. So really, um, it was great to have you on the podcast. I hope you'll come back and share about fall, hopefully next year, so we can give a little uh, of an update for the audience for that. And it was really great to talk to you. Wonderful. You as well. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Anytime.